Okay, this is 10.4 electromagnetic radiation. Now, this is one of the last lessons of the unit. We are nearing the end, so we're just wrapping up a couple ideas. You probably al already know that light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. And what we, me what we mean by that is that it is a combined electric and magnetic fields that oscillate perpendicular to each other perpendicular to each other and travel at the speed of light. And so just to the right here, we have a picture of our electromagnetic radiation. And you can see that one of these fields, the electric field, is oscillating up and down. So like here, we can see it's oscillating up and down as it travels in this direction. Whereas the magnetic field is perpendicular to that, so it's ma uh, oscillating forward, backward, or left and right. So it's coming out into the third dimension here. Okay, so that is our electromagnetic field, or sorry, our electromagnetic radiation. And you can see that those two fields are very closely linked. As one goes up, the other one goes up, but they're always, always, always perpendicular. There's three perpendicular directions. One is the direction they're both moving. And then one is the direction of the electric field, in this case up and down. And the other is the magnetic field, in this case left and right. Okay, so that's our electro electromagnetic radiation, and all of light is actually made up of that sort of radiation. And this was actually, um, it was a discovery. I mean, that wasn't always known that that was how light worked, and it explained a lot of things when that was finally discovered. Okay, so we also like to talk about the electromagnetic spectrum, which is the range of all possible electromagnetic waves. So we have a picture of the spectrum to the right here, and you can see that we have a whole range. At the very low end, at the bottom here, we have radio waves, and you can see that these ones have very, very long wavelengths. So you can see the wavelengths over here. We're talking about all the way up to the 10 to the 7 meters for a single wavelength, which is huge. But it goes for a very large range, the radio waves, all the way up to about 10 to the minus 1. So that's where we, where we end with our radio waves. And you can see that um, a certain range of that is our AM radio and FM radio. So when you turn on the AM radio, you're getting this range. And the FM radio, you're getting this slightly higher frequency range. So you can see that as the wavelength on the right here goes down, the frequency goes up. Okay, so then we go from uh, microwave, or sorry, radio waves up to microwaves. And then we've got, um, oops, so we've got microwaves here, infrared light here, then we've got the visible spectrum here. And the visible spectrum is what we usually think of for light. That's the light that we can actually see. When I turn on a light bulb, I get visible light. And it's a very narrow band. You can see it's a very small bit of the total amount of electromagnetic magnetic light that exists. And so we have infrared here, we have uh, visible light, ultraviolet, and then we have X-rays and gamma rays. Okay, anyway, there's a whole bunch of um, different uh, electromagnetic waves out there. And of course, we have a relationship relating the speed, wavelength, and frequency. You might have seen this one before. V equals F lambda. So light in a vacuum always travels at the speed of light. So we can say also V is equal to C here. So our light is traveling at the speed of light in the vacuum, and the relationship between the frequency and the wavelength, that is just in a vacuum. In air, 
we're very close to a vacuum, so we can sort of um, approximate that, that light is still traveling at C. Okay, so let's take a look at these problems here. First one says microwaves with a wavelength of one and a half centimeters carry television signals using a sequence of relay towers. Part A, we want to determine the frequency of the microwave. Well, we have V equals F lambda. So I want to determine the frequency. F is equal to V over lambda, which is equal to C, which is 3.0 times 10 to the 8, divided by our wavelength, which is 0 0.015 meters. And we get a result of, sorry, one second here, a result of 2.0 times 10 to the 10 hertz. So that's our frequency. Now it says, how much time does it take for a microwave signal to travel 5.0 times 10 to the 3 kilometers across Canada from St. John's, Newfoundland to Victoria, British Columbia? So what they're saying is going all the way from the most east point on, um, on Canada to the most west point on Canada. How long does it take for it to travel that whole distance? Well, I think you know that um, the equation here is pretty simple. Speed is distance over time. So that means our time is equal to distance over speed. And so our distance here is 5.0 times 10 to the 3 kilometers, and our speed, well actually 10 to the 3 kilometers, which is another 10 to the 3 if we want to convert to meters. So you see we end up getting f 10 to the 6. Okay, so that's our distance, and our speed is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second for, for light, and we get a result of 1.7 times uh, 10 to the negative 2. So 0 0.0017 seconds, which is um, a very, very short amount of time. That, that's to go all the way across Canada, which is the second largest country in the world. So there we go. Light moves very, very fast. You can see that these problems are fairly simple. We're really, um, we talk a bit about the concept here of electromagnetic radiation, but the actual math for this section is pretty simple. The next one here, the energy of an electromagnetic wave is proportional to its frequency. An X-ray with a wavelength of 0.025 nanometers transfers its energy to an electron to change its state. How does the energy of the electron transition compare with that of 540 nanometer visible light? Okay, so there's a few things going on here. We're saying we've got an X-ray, it has some energy, it's giving all of its energy to an elect electron. And we want to compare that much energy to the energy of visible light. So we're told that energy is proportional to frequency. So we can say here, E, um, the energy of the x-ray here, we want to get the ratio of the energy of the x-ray to the energy of our visible light. It says, how does the energy of the electron transition compare with the visible light? So the ratio here, the energy of one over the energy of the other, since both are proportional to frequency, then that means that we get this is equal to the frequency of the x-ray over the frequency of the visible light. And we can put in some numbers here. So um, first I need to get the frequency of my x-ray. So V equals F lambda, which means that F is equal to V over lambda 3.0 times 10 to the 8, divided by my wavelength here, 0 0.025 times 10 to the negative 9 for nanometers. Okay, so this gives me a frequency for the x-ray of, one second here, 1.2 times 10 to the 19 hertz. Okay, so this was for the x-ray. And actually what I'm doing here isn't entirely necessary. I can show you how we could do this in an easier way in a second. But that was the x-ray. Here's our visible light. 
same idea, f equals v over lambda, which is 3.0 times 10 to the 8, over, now we have 540 nanometers, 540 times 10 to the negative 9. This gives us 5.556 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Okay, and I'll just fix that. That's 540. Okay, so there's our two frequencies. So now we can do the frequency of the x-ray. 1.2 times 10 to the 19 over 5.556 times 10 to the 14 and I get 2.2 I get times 10 to the 4, or I can say 22,000. That's my ratio. So therefore, um, we can say the ratio here, therefore, the energy of the x-ray compared to the energy of the visible light is 22,000 to 1. So the x-ray is 22,000 times more powerful, or has more energy. Okay, and the one thing I was going to say about this is, instead of calculating the actual frequencies, we could have done since it's the frequency of the x-ray over the frequency of the visible light, and frequency is speed over lambda, we could have actually done lambda visible over lambda x-ray. That way we wouldn't have had to calculate either of those frequencies. Anyway, that would have been a bit of a shortcut. So there we go. That's the end of the lesson. I hope you enjoy the problems.